Hi, my name is Tori. I'm the construction lead. I oversaw and managed construction and worked on the final report. And my working hour factor is one. Hi, I'm Bardi Ashemi. My responsibilities for this project were to be the project manager. And with that, I analyzed test results and wrote the report for this project. My working hour factor was one. Hi, my name is Nikhil. Uh, I, I'm the lead designer of the project. I designed the column using AlphaCalc and hand calculation, and I also managed the con uh, system, managed construct uh, construction, and my working hour factor is one. Okay. Hi, my name is Pedro Mangui. I, did, I was a structural engineer for this project. I modeled the column using SolidWorks. I did the predictions, and I also uh, gathered the materials for construction. Working hour factor. Working factor is one. Our task is to design a 50 foot tall full scale reinforced concrete column. The column is to be reinforced with gray 60 steel and be connected to a fixed footing. For the full scale design, the column is axially loaded in compression with four, 400 kips from the bridge superstructure. In addition, the column must withstand an earthquake load ranging from 64 to 96 kips. The SOLIDWORKS model is composed of three major extrudes. Uh, if you notice in the figure, uh, the first is a blue base, which is pretty simple. The second is a column. Uh, the column is 15 inches high and uh, with a cross section of 7 quarters of an inch by 7 quarters of an inch. Uh, lastly, I modeled the column using a reinforced wire. Uh, I made these using circular extrudes for, uh, of scale diameter. Uh, there are 16 of these around the column, and in order uh, to model transverse wire, I did a helix spiral from the base to the top. Here's the cost breakdown of our column. As you can see, we bought 256 inches of 0.048 diameter wire and 360 inches of 0.023 diameter wire, which made up the rebars of our column. Um, for the column itself, we bought one bag of 750 gram plaster of Paris, and for the footing, we bought two bags of 750 gram of hydrostone. Our total cost of the column is about $46,000. This program produced two graphs for us. It gave us a PM diagram, at, which is known as a forced moment diagram, and also a moment curvature diagram. For further analysis, we compiled information extracted from these diagrams and produced a forced displacement curve. Uh, this diagram predicted 55 pounds at, one, at half an inch and 68 pounds at one and a half inches. Scale down model of the column was created in order to observe the effects of seismic loading that would be experienced at the site. The scale down model had a cross sectional area that was square with both transverse and longitudinal reinforcement bars introduced to create a plastic hinge at the base that would deflect and withstand any loads that would be experienced. For each longitudinal inch of the column, four transverse bars were placed in order to create significant displacement. This allowed for the column to bend without breaking and withstand any moments that would be created at the bottom. To test the column appropriately, it was first pre-stressed with 250 pounds of actual compression. Then it was loaded with a range of 40 to 60 pounds in order to displace in cycles of 0.5 inches, 1 inch, and 1.5 and inches in each direction. Test results of our column will show the performance and the failures of our column after the testing. Uh, our column was supposed to displace uh, five, half an inch, one inch, and 1.5 inch respectively in each direction with the, to able to withstand 40 and 60 pounds. As you can see the graph, our column withstood about 80 pounds only for initial half an inch displacement and it could not go past one that to 1 inch and 1.5 inch due to shear failure on top as you can see here. The reason for this was construction lab because our column was not uh, dry enough and it was still wet when we tested it and initial crack due to high plaster of Paris that it cracked from the top and it failed from here. To conclude, improper construction techniques and overcompensation of construction error led our column to become too stiff and did not allow it to fully displace before breaking. For testing to be deemed relevant and successful, testing and construction must be done correctly. Although our testing was not deemed relevant, it gave us a second chance to correct our mistakes before full-scale destruction could occur.